We live? We live. We live. Welcome back to the Opinion Factory Podcast, the podcast for free thinkers and challenge seekers. Yes, sir. I'm Khalil. I'm Alex. And last week we did an episode on can Amazon have too much power and Jeff Bezos and, and et cetera, et cetera. And it got me thinking, we're just doing a follow-up episode to that. As you know, Amazon is buying MGM, right? And there's been a lot of backlash, not necessarily for this purchase, but for the way Bezos runs his company and, and how much power he hoards. And it just had me thinking on the moral dilemma. Is it possible to be all powerful and all good? You know, you hear this with God a little bit, mm-hmm. not comparing Jesus, Bezos to God, but is it possible to rise to levels of power at, that he has ethically? Ethically? Yeah. Uh, if you ask me, obviously, no, that's not, that's not really possible. Um, I think every single person who is a billionaire, not necessarily a millionaire, but a billionaire, has had to do some, something, something shady, something grimy to one person or another. In Bezos' case, it's obviously his warehouse employees, right? How they're getting minimum wage, poor working conditions, all these rules, regulations for the biggest company in the world. And they're not enjoying that kind of success. And I feel like it's okay to bring up God in this conversation though, because that's the first time I heard about that moral dilemma, Mm -hmm. right? The first time I thought about it actually was, uh, you've seen Batman versus Superman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that it's a movie that came out years ago for those who don't know um lex luther pits batman versus superman and superman is often compared to jesus christ right there's a lot of imagery even in man of steel with him having his arms spread like he's on the cross a lot of a lot, lot of parallels there um and in one scene in batman versus superman lex luther tells superman that because you are all powerful it is impossible for you to be all good. And that's why I need to destroy you, right? And he said that because even God, who is known to be all powerful, wasn't all good because God never saved him from his, from the abuse that he suffered at his father's hands, right? And so I thought about it, me believing in God. And I was like, you know what? That kind of makes sense. <laughs> what if you don't want to admit it? What if you don't want to to agree with the villain, if God was all good, by definition, that means doing as much good as you possibly can, like within your power, right? That means there'll be no suffering. That means there'll be no pain. You know what I mean? The reason I want to not focus, because this is a valid point. The God thing is very valid. But if we're applying it to, I don't want to disqualify God, but if we're just applying to everyday life or living in, the physical world, not the metaphysical world, right? Yeah. Like you, you can make the argument that God like did that for you to shape your character or whatever. You know that that's the argument that could be made, or you know, like there's there's arguments that can be made around that, or he can't he can't. I everyone has free will. Or, there's arguments to be made around the God. Argument. I want to have it, but that's a different one. I get it. Yeah. If we're talking about like everything that's happening on planet Earth right now, like everyone thinks the government sucks, right? The government's the all powerful or one of the most powerful things in the in the country, in the world, whatever. Mm-hmm. We know they're not ethic, like, <laughs> ethically clean. For sure. Right? And the thing is, like, with, with billionaires, I don't think it could be... Not billionaires. I'll, I'll say these people that have risen to the Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, you know, type oh, yeah. power level. Is this, like, a problem? Or is it just, like, kind of the way it is? Because they haven't done, to our knowledge, anything illegal. Right? Yeah. You mean? Say again? They haven't done anything illegal. Yeah, they haven't done anything illegal. So they're not breaking laws, you know? They're making... That harmful to us? Yeah, it is. Because when you got, for example, the warehouse workers who could benefit from the success of working for the biggest company in the world, um, having to sacrifice their bladders, their, their health, you know, can't even go to the bathroom without losing pay and stuff like that. When, when you have that happening and you have the power to not make that happen, it's not illegal, but people are still paying for that. But then the argument can be made. You wouldn't get to that level of power if you didn't do that, though. 
maybe that means you shouldn't be at that level of power. But is it possible to hold that level of power? And like, so we're just saying a hard no. Like, you can't get that level. Like, if Bezos wasn't doing the Amazon warehouse thing, I'm sure his produ- his productivity of the warehouses would just be a lot less. Right? We would have same day shipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's my that's my point. The only the only way I can think of to possibly be all powerful and all good was if you were like born into that. Like if Bezos, I don't know if Bezos has kids. I think he does. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know that. If his son like grows up and then, you know, he 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 messes around, lives his life, whatever, normally, and then Jeff dies, leaves the company to his son. And now his son all of a sudden has all this power, but he never had to do nothing grimy. At that moment, <laughs> uh, okay. the company, he is all powerful and all good, right? What he does after that will take away one of those two. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Once he has to make a decision, like I gotta cut this dude, I gotta cut this, like you know what I'm saying? And it goes back to this to a larger point. Like there is no, I think last week we brought it up there, there is no morality in capitalism, right? At the end of the day, everything is done for the bottom line. Yeah, it is what it is, kind of thing. Right. The same, like the same way we have these laptops or our phones, you know, you can get the phone, the iPhone that is, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars. It's new next year. Or you can buy the ethnically, you know, ethically, sorry, the ethically clean. We paid our workers full like living wages, prices and pay three thousand dollars for a phone. It's just not going to like, you know what I'm saying? Jumping out windows to commit suicide from our switch off. Type of phone, right? As wonderful as that is, I think it's more complicated why people make decisions to not buy the more. Like, there's just no, the bottom line hurts too much. Like, I can't spend an extra $2,000 on a phone because this is the right way to do it. There's no morality in capitalism. And there's no, ah, I don't want to, no, like and I'm not running on capitalism right now because I, I, whatever foundation, whatever economic structure you have, it will, lead, it will probably lead to similar dilemmas. Right. Yeah, capitalism was made to be morally fair, right? So everyone gets their fair shot. Not really. That I mean, it's not, it's not possible. Free, free enterprise, the free market. Yeah. No, no, of course, free market, but the, the market's never really free. And there's just ways to be for it to be manipulated in so many ways. It's like beyond our comprehension of just average jokes, right? But if you think about when this country was founded and the economic systems that were put in place, you own you own land. Those are the people who have power. Those are people that can vote, make decisions. Those are people right. that can, can work in our government, et cetera, et cetera. And that's that's just the way it's kind of been. Right. The, the current I'm talking like the kernel, the core idea of capitalism. I think was to be morally fair. Obviously, it gets corrupted very very easily. Once someone gets to the top, they're gonna want to make sure they stay at the top, and then it becomes it becomes a, it becomes a choice of what you want to be. Do you oh, want to be all powerful or do you want to be all good? And being all good really doesn't pay pay off that well. It doesn't, fam. There's no <laughs> reason as a business to be good instead of powerful. There's no reason, fam. There's zero reason to be good. Like if you had the option to, and this is this problem, this is, this is what you see in this country versus a lot of the European countries, right? France has four day work weeks. Uh, Spain, I think, has siestas where they could take like a, a two three hour lunch break and have like nap time or whatever, right? Regular regular vacation time over there is about a month, if not more. That's like the bare standard. Okay. Plenty of sick days. There's no such thing as limited sick days. You have sick days in, in most of these countries. Wow. But that's because that's regulated into their government. And that's like national law. Yeah. Right? Over here, it's like you work full time, 10 days a minimum. All right, 10 days what you get, fam. <laughs> like what like what's what's my incentive as a business owner to be like, let me be good to my employees. For what? You know what? And they, now, I'm to- not. I'm not even like faulting the business owner here. You know, mm-hmm. but I, I, like if you're not at the level where you can like afford the expenses of like like you know we talked about the tipping thing before too, right? right? If I'm not Applebee's or Fridays, where I'm one of the big national food chains that can afford to pay their employees a little more, right? If I'm like just a mom and pop store, yeah, like, I'm working on the same the same laws that those other people that got above me have right why would i pay more when i have less to pay to these people that doesn't make sense to me but even when you have more to pay why would you pay more when you could just pay less (laughs) you know what i mean there's there's literally no incentive to there's no reason to 
and it's just and they want you to think that you are getting the benefit of that because they want you to they want you to feel like they're taking like as much care of you as possible so they can say we're a family work hard for me put your heart and your soul into this company and i will reward you because we're family look how look how look at this insurance package that we gave you don't get sick but look at this you know what i mean <laughs> they try to make you, that, that's the incentive because when they when when they take care of you that builds loyalty when they have a lot of loyal workers productivity goes up of course mm -hmm. happiness goes up mm -hmm. which improves everything across the board which means more money for you as a business owner but that's expensive so it's better to just sell the dream and make you buy it rather than just give it to you you know what i mean no of course of course you know you hear the american dream of upward mobility and all this type of stuff there's just things that come in the way of that's where it's not as prominent as it was before like you are right like there was a period in our life where or not in our lives but they're in the country where i'll say i'll say white people just to be fair like you know i'm gonna go back to like 1950s 60s yeah the picket fence thing right right it was easier to move upward in the social ladder right white, white men. college was more affordable <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> true true right but you know college was more affordable you know, it wasn't, you didn't have to take out crazy student loans for it. You could work summer jobs. And, and there's just ways, like you, a lot of people just work, it's literally the factory thing. You worked in high school, you finished high school, straight to the factory. You're able to support a whole family off that one job. And all three you like two bags of groceries. Right. And, and, and that was smooth, but it's not, it's not as, as easy anymore to say. But my, my thing is, right, if you're, trying to get this power right could there be any way you you get to this level of power the right way like can i can i become can i become like the and and think about politics right politics is like a known dirty game right you don't get to you don't get to become the president without lying about lying to what you're about to do or like you know for sure Biden, like or <laughs> like lying about what you're about to do, or, or or making backhanded deals, you know, like under the table. Like you don't get to be at that level without doing that type of stuff. Even your favorite candidate got some dirty shit that he or she's doing. And you can think you have the best candidate, your favorite candidate, and then you find out he's doing this because it's part of the regular like integration in it into right. into gang power, and it's like I don't really rock with you like that no more. I feel like so no, there there is no way to get to that level of power that we see today by being ethical all the way through. But I think that just goes to show that this level of power shouldn't exist right now, right? Like we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be saying, yo, go to school or work hard, study, grind, whatever, so you can be like Jeff Bezos. I feel like that standard Making that the standard is going to make people think, like, feel they don't really need to be morally just because all that matters is that I'm like Jeff Bezos right now. I'm like Elon Musk right now. You know what I mean? I feel like I'll say it. And it's been said before. At a billion dollars, that you should be cut off. Like, because you, well, you could. You, I, want, I want to make sure I phrase this the right way. There should be a limit to how much power you can get because after a certain point, there's no way you did it morally. And that should be an issue for us as a, as a society, as a people. Which I agree with you to an extent, but then what's the alternative? The alternative is that the government has all that power, right? I'm not saying Jeff Bezos is powerful as the government, but he has a lot of leeway into, you know, if he wants to pass a certain law, he can throw a bunch of money at he can throw a bunch of money at people. He can get a bunch of people out of office through exactly. ad revenue. So he has a lot of power, and he I could like he has as much power as the government. <laughs> you know, and you, and you hear the you know one of the things you hear is like uh, the Lehman Brothers, right? They're like the freaking the boogeyman of politics, where they're always backing these candidates that support you know their industries and and lay back regulations on environmental damage that they might be doing or whatever they can just be like all right you're not you're not rocking with me i'm gonna put 10 times my money in this dude's campaign get you out of here he's gonna vote for my shit and then we're good that is that is the for me at least the only 
only reason why cigarettes are not illegal. Oh yeah. It, oh, facts, facts. That that that's facts. That's a good point too. Yeah, the cigarettes not illegal, but you know, one hundred percent facts, right? But that's cocaine, the cocaine would be legal too because they could. <laughs> <smoke. laughs> but that's like, you know? yeah, and that's the alternative, and that's why you see like things like weed is illegal now because they had all this backlash, but now all these you know powerful people are able to make some money off it. Yeah. Where, like, don't we need a counterbalance to the government, even if it's not? Like, even if it's just less bad than the government, still bad. Like, like we can't just let, like if no one has all the power, right? Or just limited amount of power, they need more mobilization. Like the government can come down and stop on you. Yeah. So the counterbalance to the government should be the people, but obviously that's not the case. The counterbalance right now is just corporations, right? We can't say if, if the government is not giving us what we want, we can vote them out. We can elect them out. I feel like that's not necessarily true. Because no matter who we vote, if 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 my candidate right now is from from the from the trenches, just like me, but then here comes Marlboro saying, "Yo, I'll give you six million dollars for your campaign if you make sure this doesn't happen." He's gonna take that. He's from the trenches, and then when he gets to power, like what we want is not gonna happen. So people are not the counterbalance as it should be. Therefore, I mean, who do we hold accountable then? Like, instead of going after the government, I feel like we should be going after the companies at this point. And you the company, Phil. If you boycott the companies because of their political views, which has happened before, look at the, the, the Black Lives Matter that happened like last year with all the companies who wanted to suddenly showcase how much diversity they have. And now where are they? Back to square one, Phil. Right, because we didn't really hold them there. Because it's, it's not going to be possible to, Phil. And then we left. Fam, you can't do it for the government. You think you'll do it for a company? You think, you think people just gonna go up today? Like a company has to school really, really bad. A company has to school really, really bad to be like everyone just stops rocking. I can't. I can't think of one company that's happened to. So that's that's another issue. You need some. You need them to fuck up in some way to hold them accountable to then give you what you want. But what if See, not fuck up publicly? You can't just go, yo, uh, um, fucking what is this? Saltine crackers. Your your company. You know, I, I don't like the way. I don't like the way my, my, my DA is operating in my city. I'm going to boycott your product until you fix it. We can't, we can't do that. What, what did they do? What did the salt not, come from? It's not going to work, man. It's, it's, that's, the only, that's the only recourse. Since it's not, it's not on the people in America, at least. It's on the companies. Which, are, are, which I already have proven to be immoral, though. And right. Pay the, pay... But we can't hold the politicians accountable, so maybe we can hold the companies accountable. That's my point. I feel like that would be don't see that happen. That would be the next best thing, rather than trying to vote people out just to get the same types of people back in. As long as the companies are really controlling them, what is that really going to do? But to wrap this up, man, I think I think we're actually in agreement for once or one of the rare times. I, I I'm with you, man. I just do not think it's possible to to get power and be be good, be a good person. You can get power, but to get to an obscene level of powers, you have to do obscene things. That's just, I feel like that's just what it is. There's no, no way I'm going to become a billionaire without screwing over somebody who helps me or, or people who work for me or, or whatever. Like, there, there's no way. Or, like, evade taxes in some way, find some loophole. There's no way that I can be all good and be a trillionaire while there is people dying of hunger around the world every day and homeless people by the droves in L.A. Like, it, it's not possible. Uh. Pigeon Factory Podcast. Find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. We want to thank y'all for listening. Leave us a review and we will see y'all.